I think this photo will go down as one of the most disturbing in the history of Yosemite Park. And that's because at this spot, not long after this picture was taken, the climber in question, named Dan Osman, would find himself in his horrifying last moments. This is his legendary story. A 35-year-old rock climber that many would describe as insane, Dan was like a real-life Spider-Man. He would scale terrifying heights with nothing but a bit of chalk, the clothes on his back, and a grip as strong as his willpower. Dan Osman was a legend in the world of rock climbing, and he still holds records for being the fastest free climber until a freak accident took his life unexpectedly. In an ironic twist of fate, it wasn't even free soloing that brought him to his last terrifying moments. At the end of the video, you'll see footage of the group who tried repeating his last ever stunt over 20 years later. You can't underestimate the bravery and willpower it takes to climb up the steep face of a mountain with no support ropes. This is known as free solo climbing. Imagine starting your climb at the base of a thousand foot cliff face. You look up at this beast towering before you. Once you start, there's no going back, and one mistake or misplaced step could lead to a deadly fall. You begin your chilling climb, drying your sweaty palms with a bag of climbing chalk as you move from crack to ledge. You're now above 40 feet, meaning a fall will more than likely be fatal. After minutes of suffering that feel like hours, you eventually reach the halfway point. You can almost taste the sweet water and relaxation waiting at the top of this momentous climb. Suddenly, your muscles freeze up. A combination of fear, fatigue, and adrenaline courses through your veins, robbing you of the vital strength needed for the climb. Your body is telling you to let go, but your mind knows you won't survive this fall. Then, something else takes over. It's a feeling of sheer willpower and drive. You've embraced the fear of the unknown. Now your mind is telling you that you can choose to live so long as you keep moving. Dan Osman embraced this fear as though he were personal friends with the Grim Reaper himself. When you're midway up a free climb without support ropes, it's not your training or skill that keeps you from falling. It's the fear of gravity and the determination you have to overcome it. This is the feeling Dan Osman lived for. He wanted to stare the end in the face and push himself to keep living. His friends knew him as Dano, and he's still considered one of the fastest free climbers that ever existed. In a record-breaking climb, Dan Osman scaled Bear's Reach without the use of any safety ropes. He completed the 400-foot climb at a walking speed of 4 minutes and 25 seconds. Many thought that free solo climbing would be the end of Dan, when in fact, ropes would play a big role in his tragic accident. Dan may have climbed freestyle, but as you're about to find out, he was no stranger to falling either. His rock climbing exploits started when he was just a teenager of 14 years old, his father, Les Osman, attributed his fearless nature and diehard spirit to his samurai heritage. The Japanese-American descended from samurai warriors known as the Takuchi clan, who moved to Hawaii at the end of the 19th century. His father passed on a samurai level of discipline through Aikido and other martial arts. Les Osman said, in climbing, he found something where he could test himself against himself. He met the tiger, and he didn't run. So... He tackled each mountain with a plan of attack and the ferocity befitting a true warrior. But it wasn't just the climbing that Dan fell in love with. In 1989, he was trying to place a rope bolt above an extremely difficult section of a climb. He fell over 50 times in an attempt to establish this new route for fellow climbers. While this was definitely a sign of his amazing determination, it turned into something much bigger. Dan Osmond discovered that falling off a rock face was more exhilarating than climbing it. And it was this desire to free fall that would eventually lead to his demise. Dan was relatively unknown in the 80s and 90s, but a documentary show called Masters of Stone propelled him into the public eye. The filmmakers Eric Perlman and Mike Hatchett were both high-level climbers. They traveled to the Sierra Nevada mountain range, where cave rock runs along Lake Tahoe, to film a climber tackle a 5.12 on the Yosemite Decimal System. This is a system for grading the difficulty of climbs. Fifth-class terrain typically means a vertical or nearly vertical cliff and significant exposure. 
Falling will almost certainly lead to serious injury and possibly fatality. Belaying is recommended, and climbers often use a helmet, harness, and rock climbing shoes to provide additional safety and assistance. In fifth class climbing, a Route 5.0 is the easiest, with 5.15 being the most difficult on the Yosemite Decimal System that only master climbers should even consider attempting. This is where the filmmakers met Dan Osman. While filming, Perlman remembers, all of a sudden, there's this guy up above us working on a 5.14. He says nothing, but his body language was clear. Why are you filming that guy when I'm climbing so much harder? As Dan climbed, so too did his reputation. He wasn't just known for free climbing, but for the insane whippers he deliberately did. A whipper is what rock climbers call a fall from the cliff face. They're exhilarating as they are dangerous, so most climbers only experience it when they mistakenly fall and their rope saves them from the ground below. But for Dan, he couldn't get enough of the exhilarating feeling that comes with a fall. It scared him at first, but he realized there was a thrill to it that was absent in the methodical discipline of climbing. By mastering and confronting his fear of falling, Dan became more comfortable on the rock face, catapulting his abilities. When describing his approach to free climbing, Dan said, Soloing is just a game. It's a serious one, but it's a game. The price of messing up is your life, so you better know what you're doing. Dan Osman held records for his rope jumping stunts, often launching himself off a cliff and falling over a thousand feet before being jerked to safety at the end of a rope. As much as Dan took risks, he also had a methodical approach to safety. With the mindset of an engineer, he would devise and implement the tight ropes and winches for his dangerous falls. But as you'll see, even a methodical approach wouldn't be able to stop fate in the life of Dan Osman. Although he was an expert climber, his journey came with its fair share of accidents and injuries. In the 90s, Dan experienced the effects of a nasty fall that took him out of the game for a couple of months. It happened on one of the Lake Tahoe's hardest routes on Cave Rock, known as Slayer, where Dan wanted to take a particularly big whipper with the help of his belayer. A belayer is someone who provides friction on a rope, allowing them to catch the climber in case of a fall. But on this day, Dan's belayer was inexperienced. Dan took his whipper, but his belayer didn't slow the rope quick enough. He came hurtling down and slammed into the wall leaving him with multiple injuries, the worst of which were two broken ankles. Instead of recovering at home like most normal people, Dan could still be found visiting Cave Rock almost daily. He picked up some stonemason skills and started improving the area for other climbers. Dave Griffith, a longtime friend and climbing partner, said he's crawling on his knees, hauling bags of cement up the path. Another fellow climber, Todd Graham, remarked on the over 300 hours Dan put into improving Cave Rock. He took Cave Rock from a litter-filled party hangout to a beautiful, amazing climbing area over Tahoe. He laid down patio stone over much of the floor of the cave and built stone seats for us to use. The improvements to the base of the cave showed Dan's deep artistic side. Dan's down-to-earth and humble nature made him a friend to everyone he met. He was always willing to help, whether it was a lifelong friend or someone he had just bumped into. He treated everyone with respect and kindness. This made the events on November 23, 1998 even more tragic. Dan had become obsessed with falling further and faster. He wanted to test the limits and break records. So, he set up a 1,200-foot horizontal rope system spanning from the Fifi Buttress to the iconic Leaning Tower Cliff formation in Yosemite National Park. This new setup allowed him to push his jumps from 600 feet to record-setting heights of 1,000 feet or more. Yosemite's Leaning Tower became a place of triumph for Dan Osman, but it was also the scene for his final tragedy, where he pushed his limits too far. One of Dan's climbing buddies, Dean Potter, jumped on the Leaning Tower rig, but said it wasn't for him. My climbing has always been about control, so throwing myself off the rocks like that, thinking maybe I live, maybe I die, pretty much freaks me out. But Dano was a master at this stuff. He had these elaborate drawings, and while we were working on Leaning Tower, he'd get up all excited in the morning, saying he hadn't slept all night thinking about the rig. 
Dan Osman was very much his own person, living outside the ordinary concerns of everyone else. As a result, he had issues with authority. He was caught driving on a suspended license, and he had a litany of unpaid fines. On top of this, the authorities had issues with his new leaning tower rig, saying it posed a danger to anyone who used it. Many believed this conflict with authority played a role in his passing. A month before Dan's tragic end, he got a call from his daughter, Emma Osman. She was concerned about him, so he drove from Yosemite to Gardnerville and spent some time with her. If only he took her intuitive feeling as a warning. In an interview on the final episode of Master of Stone, Dan said, When this is all over, I'm really looking forward to spending some time with my daughter and family and basically parking on the couch for a while. I've been going at mock speed for quite a while now, and I think it's a matter of time before things start catching up to you, and I've got this really hardcore group of guardian angels that need a prepaid vacation. It turned out to be his last interview. On the return trip to Yosemite, Dan was pulled over by park rangers who wanted him to take down his leaning tower rig. It was legal, but they didn't want it up. While he was pulled over, they discovered his mountain of unpaid tickets and ended up arresting him. He spent two weeks in jail, and he promised the authorities that he would remove his rig of death. Dan posted bail and ended up with his sister and brother-in-law. During this time, he enjoyed his last remaining days with his daughter Emma. She was seven years old at the time, and the apple of his eye. He had pictures of her all over his apartment, and while he spent a lot of time with her, he acknowledged it wasn't enough. But in the back of his mind, he worried the authorities at Yosemite would dismantle his leaning tower rig, so he decided to go take it down himself. In an interview, fellow climber Perlman said he told his daughter he loved her, turned around, and went back to Yosemite to die. Since he was concerned about getting pulled over again, Dan asked his friend, Miles Dysher, to drive him to Yosemite and help him remove his rigging system. From the sounds of it, Dan was not lying to the authorities. He had every intention to take down the leaning tower rig, but once he was up there, he couldn't resist the urge to experience the thrill of falling once again. Both Dan and Dysher jumped several times that day, thinking this would be his last jump on the rig. Dan wanted to push it to the extreme and hopefully break a new record. He didn't realize it would be his last jump ever. Dan introduced an additional 75 feet to the line, hoping to fall over 1,300 feet. This was an insane distance to fall, but Dan had the confidence, bravery, and skill to do it. He decided to change the location of where he was jumping from and poised himself at the cliff edge. Adrenaline coursed through his veins as he looked at the monumental fall in front of him. He'd done this hundreds of times before. Why would anything go wrong now? He took a deep breath and let his survival instinct go, smoothly jumping from the cliff like a proud eagle taking flight. With outstretched arms, Dan flew headfirst, feeling the wind rush past his ears and exhilaration run through his heart. He got to the end of his controlled fall, but as the ropes tightened, a tremendous snap reverberated through the air. Dan Osmond's controlled fall was over, and his uncontrolled descent began. Miles Dysher heard the final sounds of his close friend as he fell, and then there was silence. What exactly happened that led to Dan's tragic end? It likely started with his arrest a few weeks earlier. Perlman said that it hurt him. It was mentally crushing. They caged the wild falcon. Not only was his spirit and confidence broken from his stay in jail, but the ropes used in his final jump had stayed out in the elements for all that time. They were exposed to rain, snow, and heat that weakened them over time. It was likely this, combined with the change in jump angle, that caused the rope to snap. In an investigation, it was found that the horizontal line crossed the jump rope, causing it to tear apart from the friction. It appears the guardian angels that were watching over Dan all this time decided to take their vacation early. The saddest part of this story is how life was becoming more stable for Dan Osman. A week before he died, he proposed to his girlfriend, Nikki Warren. He did not have some death wish, but was the victim of an unfortunate mistake. 
On a forum in 2011, the subject of Dan Osman came up. As with any extreme sports practitioner, the comments were a mix of support for his daring exploits and harsh criticism based on a perceived selfish disregard for his loved ones. In a sea of negative comments, Emma Osman came to the defense of her much-loved father. Here is an excerpt from the full comment. My dad didn't just inspire people by making some five-minute video one day. Anyone could do that at the click of a button. He was honestly an artist at what he did. Watch him climb. His fluidity and composition while scaling up the cliff is remarkable in itself. The funny thing is that he did all of this stuff because he truly loved and enjoyed it. He did not leave behind a wife and child. My wonderful mother and he split when I was four years old, and she did a great job of raising me. My father played his role as much as possible between training the Navy SEALs, going on expeditions in Alaska and Russia, and traveling the world to various climbing locations, stopping here and there to build a house or work on a new building to make some extra cash to send to me. I would say he did a good job of being a great guy and an outlandishly awesome rock climber and jumper. Let's give it up for the inspirational hero we all wish or hope to be one day. Dan Osmond's fatality caused the complete closure of Cave Rock in Yosemite Park. The authorities removed all the bolts that ran along the routes Dan had set up, so the entire rock climbing community felt the effect of this. Over two decades later, a group of climbers wanted to honor Dan Osman and do what hadn't been done for over 20 years, repeat the most epic rope jump in Yosemite National Park. They climbed a route called Roulette on Leaning Tower, hiked up Fifi Buttress three times to tag a line across by hand, and to rig an all-natural anchor for a high line, naming it Flossing the Sky, just as Osman called the noise ropes made during rope jumps. After 15 years of dreaming about doing this line, a climber named Ryan Jenks and his friends got to jump over 500 feet down the face of Leaning Tower. I'll leave you with some true words from Dan Osman himself. People call it a death wish, but that's not it. It's a life wish. Thank you for watching. I've been getting a lot of new subscribers lately. I appreciate all of you so much. If you want more stories like this, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.